So one of the most difficult things to understand when it comes to implementing the inverse Burroughs Wheeler transform is that given a T, how do we determine the next array? Because if you have the next array and the first, you should be able to get the string back. So this is your Burroughs Wheeler transform that's given. And this is what you would get if you sort it. But instead of really sorting this, which would be n log n, what we do is we go through the, the string that's given to us and do key index counting to get one of these things. This says that we have E starting from zero. Um, in fact, the H would start from, so E would go from zero, one, two, H would go from three, and then uh, L would go from four, and R would go from five, and W will go from six. Now the question is, how do we figure out the next? And what we mean by next is that given, say, for example, H, the next of H would be this. Is that what we want to get? So in order to find that, what we can do is we can look at the T of the, let's suppose that we have this index zero. Um, so in order to find that, what we need to do is if you want to say next of three would be zero, that's what we're trying to get. Next of three is equal to zero. So the question is, how do we get this thing set up? So one way to think about that is when you have a T, and if you look at the T's of zero, which is, which is H, and then if you look at the H's position in the sorted array, that's given by this one here. So in other words, when you take the next of let's say this is the array called count. So if you take the count of this character, let's call this t of one or something, from t of zero. Okay, so if you take that, so we take the the count of that, and then take the the character, and then that gives me that this is equal to three because that's given by this is equal to zero. In other words, next of three is equal to zero. So I could write zero here. All right, so one of the other things you need to do is once you do this, you have to increment the count array for that particular character. So this character was the H. So this means when I look for the next thing, I'm gonna be looking at four. So let's see how it works because we don't have another H. We're not gonna to get to that four again because we're not going to find another, another H here. So now let's look at this one here. So we want to know the next of T. So let's take the count of T of one. All right, so if you take that, what is T of one? T of one is E and count of E is zero. So therefore this is zero. So that tells us next of zero is going to be that index one. So next of zero is one. So next of zero is equal to one. So next of three is zero, next of zero is one. And that's kind of clear, next of zero. So after this, we get that one. Next of zero is one. Let's get to this one here. Now, one of the other things we need to do is to increment the count of E by one. So this would go to one. So anyway, I happen to find the next E. So for example, I will find next E when my index is at four. So if I look at the next, I mean, if I look at the count, count of, um, so let's take a look at the count of the uh, uh, T of four. Now T of four happens to be E, T of four happens to be E. So the count of E is now one. So therefore this is one. And therefore we say next of one is equal to that four. So next of one is four. Okay, so the next of one means that uh, if you take this and rotate it, you would get that. So that's the whole idea. Hope uh, this makes a little bit more sense so you can implement 
the actual barrel swivel inverse transfer.